Hello and welcome to the live stream. Today we are talking about audio routing on the Rodecaster Pro and the Rodecaster Duo, or Rodecaster Pro 2, I should say, and the Rodecaster Duo. Something that I've talked about uh, at length on, in various videos before, uh, but you can never talk about it too much because this past week I've had about four different calls with four individual clients, uh, all with audio routing issues on their Rodecaster. And what I'm finding is that, uh, yeah, it's, it's good to have a refresher on this kind of stuff because uh, sometimes you set all of this stuff up, uh, you go ahead and start using it for uh, for days, weeks, months, uh, and then you have some issue arise, and then there's some issue with, uh, or <laughs> then you have to figure out uh, that sort of forgotten stuff that uh, you uh, you set up uh, months ago. So uh, this is the point of today, is to go through all of the uh, potential audio routing issues that you may run into, how to set uh, the Rodecaster Duo and Rodecaster Pro 2 up specifically for using it with things like Ecamm Live, Discord, uh, Zoom, and getting this sort of two-way routing of audio going between these different applications. Uh, talking about Mix Minus as well, uh, can now Never talk about that too much because that can be the cause of a lot of issues and I'll just go through some of these other little troubleshooting steps that I go through when somebody books a call with me uh, and says help <laughs> what do I go through to try and evaluate you know where the issue is because this is one of the things about the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Duo and I mean even the Stream Rex actually as well um, is that they are you know these consumer devices that are so accessible and yet you can do some really pretty phenomenally complex stuff with them um, and so uh, so yeah it's it is easy to get uh, a little bit lost sometimes and so that is the point of <laughs> of today uh, so we're going to start off then uh, with uh, just taking a look as I say today I'll go through with uh, respect to the Rodecaster Duo um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about but all of this stuff basically applies to the Rodecaster Pro 2 as well just that uh, obviously you've got a couple of extra mic inputs uh, and also a couple of extra headphone inputs so uh, speaking of inputs that's what we'll talk about first the the inputs and outputs on this device um, so on the back of the Rodecaster Duo you've got uh, two combo jack inputs there which are for I've called them mics technically it could be an instrument as well but let's just call them mics for simplicity um, then you've also got two headphones uh, sockets on the back there as well and then you've got two further sockets that are for a left and right channel for speakers uh, and then we've also as my uh, <laughs> computer screen just starts glitching uh, we've also then got uh, this one over here <laughs> which is the hang on a minute <laughs> <laughs> this is all going wrong. Uh, where are we now? Let me just bring this up again. Everything's just suddenly frozen on my computer. Let me see if Ecamm has uh, stopped broadcasting. Hmm, the recording has stopped, but it looks like the live stream has continued. Uh, there we go. Uh, I'll just continue as if nothing had happened. <laughs> One second. Yeah, my uh, my keynote suddenly stopped. Um, so I don't know if you can still all hear me in the live stream or if indeed that has, uh, that has stopped. Hmm, it appears to still be going. Uh, but something is just glitching. Let me just come back to this scene. Maybe I'll try this. Uh, there we go. <laughs> Let me just double check that I am still uh, still live. It appears that I am. Okay, there we go. It appears that it is still live. And now, obviously, everything is uh, going back to normal and it's just jumped through my slides. Never mind. <laughs> That's the beauty of live streaming. Uh, so I got a little bit ahead of myself there, but basically on the back there, in addition to all of those, uh, we can also see the uh, the three USB channels. There's actually two USB sockets. Uh, thanks uh, thanks for all the uh, chat. Let me know that you can still hear me. All my screens just went blank for a second. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. Anyway, so we've got those uh, three USB uh, channels over two separate uh, cables, basically. So you've got the USB one on the, uh, the left-hand side, uh, and that is the USB main stereo and USB chat channel. And then you've got another one, which is USB secondary. Uh, there is obviously also, I say obviously, I often say that when it's not necessarily obvious at all. Uh, we've also got a Bluetooth channel as well. So that enables you to connect to your phone. And I'll talk about that a little bit later because that can sometimes be a little bit confusing. You can use it as a sort of two-way audio with a phone, but you can also connect to a Bluetooth speaker, for example. And the setup for those is slightly different. So, uh, so yeah, I'll come to that a little bit later. Um, so that is the sort of inputs and outputs. I've not mentioned then, obviously, there is a, a power connection there. There's also a slot for an SD card and uh, Ethernet cable as well. Um, but for, um, for now, I'm just going to stick with the actual sort of audio inputs and outputs. Um, so let's take a look then at uh, where I think that there can be sometimes confusion or where I, I know there is sometimes confusion, which is that you've got these different cables that are going in and out or the Bluetooth for the, uh, the wireless. Um, and the thing that can be sometimes confusing is that some of these are both inputs and outputs. So what I mean by that is obviously a microphone is purely an input. So your audio is going into your mic, 
into the mix of the Rodecaster and going wherever it's going. Uh, with the headphones, that's the opposite, obviously. That is for just listening. So you've got your headphones that you can just uh, hear with. There's no audio going into the mix from that. Uh, speakers are the same, obviously. It's just for sending audio out of the Rodecaster. Headset is uh, a little bit more obvious if you've got one of the uh, Rode NTH100M uh, headsets with a little boom mic on it like this. Not a boom mic, but a little, uh, <laughs> a little mic on the front. Then obviously, when this cable is plugged into the Rodecaster, you've got two-way audio there because obviously you're hearing uh, through the headphones, but you've also got the, uh, the audio going in from the microphone as well. Uh, but these are the three that uh, can sometimes cause a little bit of confusion. It's the USB channels where something can be both an input and an output. So you've got audio coming into the mix down these USB channels, but audio is also going back out the other way. And this is the same as well with the Bluetooth, if indeed you are using it to pair with a phone for sort of two-way audio as well. So what I have found on uh, my calls with people is that they're, you know, wondering why they're seeing the levels going up and down on the roadcaster, and yet they're not hearing anything in a particular channel, um, or they're wondering why, you know, everything's coming into Ecamm, but why are they seeing it on this channel rather than that channel? So the way to think about this then is to think about it more in terms of a sort of matrix. So if you've got uh, this uh, this table here with inputs and outputs, um, then we can map these things that we've just discussed into here. But you'll notice that obviously inputs it. It's not going to include the speakers or the headphones. So the only things that are inputs to the Rodecaster are either the microphones, uh, the headset, or the microphone portion of the headset, I should say, um, and then those uh, USB channels and the Bluetooth. Whereas on the outputs, we've got uh, obviously the speakers and headphones, uh, but then we've also got a duplication of those USB channels and the Bluetooth as well. Now, ordinarily, when you just sort of plug the Rodecaster in, the default behavior is going to be that basically everything is going everywhere. So what that means is, that you know if you are listening to your headphones you can see all of these different things or you can hear all of these different things rather um, so that is what I'm what this table is supposed to show it's showing which audio is going everywhere so if you want to know something on the uh, the the chat channel over here for example um, then you could say can this hear the uh, the USB one uh, yes it can because there's a little tick in the box so that's what this sort of matrix is supposed to uh, to, to show uh, there is a little caveat with that, which I'll come to later, which is this uh, speaker. So the default behavior of the speaker is that, um, or the sort of monitor out on the back of the Rodecaster, is that when you've got an open mic, uh, the speaker automatically mutes so that you don't get audio going basically out of the speaker and back into the mic and, and causing all sorts of issues. So I'll come to that a little bit later, though. There are times when you might want to sort of override that, which, again, I'll talk about later. So let's talk about then these USB channels and the issues that people uh, the, the, the people that I speak to have is related to audio routing between apps. You know, if somebody's recording a podcast and they've got you know, a couple of people on microphones uh, with their headphones on, you know, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to, uh, to sort of think about there. It's when you start introducing into the mix the uh, sort of computers and computer apps where you want the audio to come into the Rodecaster and then go back out to these different apps. Like, for example, if I'm on a Zoom call and I want to do a presentation and I've got my uh, Ecamm Live running into, uh, into Zoom, but I want to be able to have the audio routing from Ecamm into Zoom and the audio routing from Zoom back into Ecamm. This is such a common thing that... Uh, that I encounter with uh, with my sort of uh, client base, for want of a better word. Uh, so if I just uh, go on to the, uh, the next slide for a second, what we can say is um, if you have Ecamm on a particular channel, um, there are two particular uh, things that you set in Ecamm. You're setting both your microphone and your speaker, and you want to keep uh, Ecamm on its own dedicated channel, and you want to have Zoom on its own dedicated channel. So uh, with the input, the input from the Ecamm into the Rodecaster, bear in mind, is the speaker from Ecamm because the speaker is putting out from Ecamm any audio from Ecamm, like any music, any sound effects. If you're using interview mode in Ecamm, then obviously the interview guest is coming into Ecamm. And so that then is coming into the Rodecaster as an input down here. But then if you want to know what is then feeding back into Ecamm, uh, the default behavior would be that Ecamm is hearing everything. So if you speak on your microphone on mic one, uh, then that is going to feed into Ecamm. If you have somebody else on a second microphone, that's also going to go into Ecamm as well. Same with the headset. Obviously, I'm just going down this list. All of these things uh, as a default will go back into Ecamm. 
There's one of these that is a little bit of an issue, which is this one, which I'll come to in a moment, which is that Ecamm audio, therefore, as a default, is going to be coming into the Rodecaster and be feeding straight back to itself. And that's what causes this issue called slapback, commonly referred to as echo, where you are getting the audio from, uh, from an application, be it Ecamm or Zoom, feeding back in on itself. And we'll talk about how to correct that in a moment. Um, so then we've also got uh, another channel, a USB channel. The USB uh, chat is the one that I use for this. Um, and so this would be for Zoom. And again, uh, at the, the, the default is going to be that Zoom can hear uh, all of these different things. Your participants are going to be coming into Zoom as an input here. So that means it's going to be coming into the mix. And of course, that means the Ecamm will be able to hear Zoom as well, or, you know, the audio will feed through, but also the people on Zoom will hear all of your other inputs. And we'll talk about how you can uh, customize this uh, in a little moment. Now, I also have uh, Discord running as well. So I actually have a Discord uh, back channel uh, going at the moment. So uh, what, every time I live stream, that's going on. I've got that on a def different channel um, and it is muted so that uh, so that you're basically not hearing this, but uh, sort of I could hear it in my ears, although I just put the, the volume down to, to, to zero as it happens. Um, but that is the same again. We're going to put that on the same input channel and output channel. And I'll talk about the, uh, the routing of this in a moment. Uh, and you may also want to have uh, a phone connected as well over Blue Bluetooth. Um, so, you know, there's somebody in the uh, the Take One Tech Academy, they do work in real estate, and they run their um, their presentations through Ecamm. Uh, they do calls with uh, estate agents on Zoom, but then they also have somebody joining on phone. Uh, and then they've got a whole back chat channel going in Discord. So uh, this is a very real uh, scenario that we've got uh, set up here. Uh, and this is how you would sort of set this up from an audio routing point of view, or at least almost there's a couple of little tweaks that we need to make to it, which we'll come to in a moment. So I've talked about putting Ecamm, Zoom and Discord on these channels, but what does that actually look like in, in real terms? Uh, well, if we take a look at the Ecamm settings and the Zoom settings, first of all, as well, um, then in Ecamm, when we're talking about the inputs and outputs, I'm specifically talking about, first of all, in the sound levels window. So this is the little window that you have uh, sort of popped up uh, in, uh, in Ecamm as one of the little free floating windows. Uh, of all of the Ecamm windows, this is the one that I always try and leave open at all times because uh, it's always good to be able to glance down and just see that your audio is, is going up and down there. Uh, whereas a lot of the other Ecamm windows, I'll just shut down. I don't need to see them all the time. Uh, but this is an important one. So, uh, but the key thing here, though, is that I've got Rodecaster Pro 2 main stereo, or sorry, Rodecaster Duo as it is, main stereo selected here. And then also in the Ecamm preferences under the audio section, I've also got Rodecaster Duo main stereo there. So the key is you want to um, have each uh, application using the same channel so don't have your ecamm set to you know main stereo for the uh, for the microphone but then on the speaker have it set to the chat or the secondary or something like that uh, we'll come to exactly why that is in at the moment but uh, we're giving it its own sort of dedicated channel uh, with Zoom, then, uh, what I'm doing is I've gone into Zoom, I'm in the Zoom settings, I've gone into the audio section, and then under the speaker, we're setting the Rodecaster Duo chat, and under the microphone, I'm setting the Rodecaster Duo chat as well. So once again, it's on its own sort of dedicated channel, and critically, those two have got to be different. So don't put Ecamm on the same thing as Zoom, because that will cause an issue with routing that we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, there's other, one other thing that I want to draw your attention to in this particular section, though, uh, which is the cause of a common issue that, uh, that I have people asking me about. Uh, and it's this section down here to do with uh, the audio profile, as they call it in the Zoom settings. Now, the default setting for this is going to be that first little box that currently is unchecked, but it says um, Zoom background noise removal. Now, Zoom is assuming that uh, you are on a... Uh, a crappy camera and a crappy microphone. And that is just what they are sh assuming quite rightly is the norm. And so Zoom is uh, very kindly trying to do lots of things to fix your audio and also uh, resolution and, and things like that. So uh, in terms of audio, though, what they're doing is they are by default removing anything that they think is not human speech. So they're removing any background noise um, and even human speech that's in the background. So they're prioritizing, you know, you speaking and they're trying to pick that out and make it as clear as possible for those listening, which for the vast majority of users is great because it does mean that we get better quality audio in Zoom calls. However, if you are, you know, using a Rodecaster, no doubt you've put a, li a little bit more care and effort into your setup and certainly your, you know, your audio setup if you're using a good quality mic with uh, the Rodecaster. Um, and also if you're using a Rodecaster, 
the maybe the, the instance that you're wanting to play you know sound effects from the roadcaster that is one of the things that it does very well or maybe you're playing audio from ecamm routing it through the roadcaster and having it go into zoom well, if you are doing that, Zoom does not realize that that is intentional. <laughs> For want of a better word, it's like it is just assuming that that is all background noise. Uh, and so the default behavior of Zoom is that it's going to try and just eliminate that. And it actually does it really well. So a common question that uh, crops up, a common issue is that people say, I'm using a Rodecaster, I've got Ecamm going, or I'm using sound effects from the Rodecaster. It's all going into Zoom, but my participants are not hearing it. Well, this is the reason why. It's this audio profile, and it is the Zoom background noise removal now you can select a different level if you if you have the background noise removal selected uh, there is basically the default which is going to remove everything uh, but there is also a low medium and high setting so you could potentially try putting it on the low setting so that it is going to uh, you know remove uh, excessive noise but it's it's going to allow sort of oh sorry it's going to remove minimal background noise but it's going to allow through like music and so on but actually my preferred setting for this if you are have got a good audio setup is to use this option original sound for musicians and what that means is you're just going to get much higher quality audio uh, coming through and it's critically not going to do any uh, background noise removal. One thing to note about this though is although you toggle it on in the settings here you do actually have to activate it each and every time you start a meeting uh, and what you'll see is when you start a zoom meeting up in the top left hand corner uh, there'll be a thing that says original sound for musicians colon off and you just click on it and it will switch to on so you do have to do that as part of your uh, meeting startup routine um, but once you do do that um, then you're going to get all of the quality of uh, the roadcaster uh, coming through uh, now there are three little sub options there and you'll notice that I have a high fidelity music mode checked. That's basically the highest quality you know, coming through without any, uh, any uh, adjustments whatsoever done to your audio. You've also got the option to check stereo audio. Um, you'll get a little warning for these, by the way, if you click on the little uh, question mark next to them saying uh, that this is going to take higher bandwidth and all of that kind of thing. But really, the audio compared to the video is negligible. Um, so uh, sending a stereo audio signal versus mono it's probably not going to make that much of a difference to most people's uh, uh, you know connection if you've got a reasonably good uh, good connection and certainly uh, not like now I've got a gig up and down so the uh, the connection is not an issue for for me so I just have that one selected so that if I ever I am playing stereo music not that I ever really do that actually but it's just there in case um, then that that will come through at sort of full um, uh, full quality stereo for uh, the participants the one that I don't have selected is echo cancellation and this is uh, echo cancellation in zoom where it's going to remove uh, the you know if you were, if you had zoom playing on speakers for example it would remove the uh, the potential for slapback uh, coming back i'll talk more about that setting in particular uh, in uh, in a little bit so uh, that is my ecamm and zoom settings um, now there is also system audio uh, so let's talk about that one for a second because uh, in system audio the way that i have this set up is that uh, in the uh, ecamm uh, sorry in the system preferences under the sound settings in the uh, output i have that set to rocaster duo main stereo and that is the same as for ecamm um, now i mentioned having everything on a separate channel um, actually because ecamm handles system audio itself uh, in any case, you know, if I'm doing a screen share in Ecamm uh, and it's uh, I want to pass the system audio through, Ecamm can handle that kind of side of the routing. So that's why I'm perfectly comfortable having my system audio on the same channel as Ecamm. Um, and then again, I do the same for the input as well. Again, in system preferences, just going to the sound and the input uh, that is set to uh, Roadcaster Duo main stereo as well. So basically, I've got Ecamm and system audio on one channel, uh, Zoom on another. And as we would uh, mentioned Discord as well, I should definitely uh, talk about uh, this as well. <laughs> the uh, Discord, uh, in the Discord voice and video settings, uh, then we've got the uh, Rodecaster Duo secondary and Rodecaster Duo secondary set in there. So what that means is because now I've got three channels with those three things on it, if I come over to my uh, Rodecaster Duo, uh, you can see what this looks like in uh, in reality. Here I've got my, uh, my green, which is my microphone you can see it's going up and down there i've also got orange for ecamm blue for zoom and purple uh, for discord so um the uh, the thing about this is that now i have independent control of all of those things so if i'm wanting to route audio from ecamm my ecamm audio will come through there in fact maybe if i just uh, play something in ecamm a little audio thing you'll see that it is coming through if i uh, should have got this uh, ready in advance but there you go where's my little window gone 
I'll find it. If I just play this little clip, whatever this random music clip is, uh, you see there that it is coming through on that, although the volume level in there is a bit low. You can see there that is now coming through in the uh, in the Rodecaster on there, but I can obviously fade that up and down uh, for how it's going to come through to uh, to people in Zoom or, or wherever, wherever it is. Note that uh, for the live stream, uh, this audio is playing in Ecamm itself, so it's not passing through the Rodecaster to reach you. You're just hearing it directly from uh, from Ecamm. Um, so uh, that is my my sort of audio routing setup. But uh, there is this potential issue then. Uh, if we come back to our little uh, graph, if I just um, bring this one back up. Uh, there is this potential issue that we've got. Um, oh, sorry, I just missed that one thing there, actually. Um, one thing that I do in Discord additionally is there is this option down at the bottom, uh, input sensitivity. Now, what that is is for um, Discord has effectively a kind of built-in noise gate, which means that uh, when somebody's in a Discord voice channel and they are not speaking, then basically their mic goes off. So it means that you've not got a load of, uh, you know, a, a virtual room full of people and you're just hearing all of the background noise going on. So it has this, uh, this input sensitivity option um, that you can toggle off. So because the Rodecaster has got a built-in noise gate and I use this and I have it set to basically close whenever I stop speaking, which is why it goes deadly silent when I stop speaking, um, then uh, I've actually disabled this option in uh, in Discord. So instead of using automatically determined sensitivity, I've toggled that one off. Uh, this is this big box down at the bottom that we're looking at now. Um, and then also there is a, a slider there that you can adjust the sensitivity manually. So I've basically moved that all the way to the left. Now, what that means is that in Discord, technically I have a continuously open mic. However, because I've got the uh, the Rodecaster's noise gate working, it means that uh, that audio isn't coming through. So that's just my uh, my preference there, so that I don't have to worry about you know it kicking in or or not when I'm uh, when I'm speaking. Um, but let's get back to uh, this routing table then, because uh, there is this issue that I kind of mentioned earlier, and uh, this is all now related to uh, mix minus. So the thing about mix minus is um, when you've got this uh, this routing table, as we've seen uh, with with Ecamm, uh, the default is that Ecamm is going to be hearing uh, all of these different things. Um, but what we don't want to happen is we don't want uh, the Ecamm audio to be feeding back in on itself. We also don't want the Zoom audio to be feeding back in on itself because that would mean the participants audio would be coming into the Rodecaster. You would be able to hear them, you know, it would feed back into Ecamm and everything, but it would also feed back in on itself. And this is the thing that they call echo, technically called slapback, which is a single repetition of the uh, their voice or whatever the sound is, like a fraction uh, later uh, momentarily later because it's basically the audio is coming in and then there's a bit of time involved in looping everything or routing everything and then it gets fed straight back to the uh, to the to the source so this is what we need to try to fix with mix minus and mix minus is essentially uh, removing the uh, incoming feed from the mix so what this looks like is basically uh, we are then removing ecamm from the uh, or sorry the usb one channel from the output USB one. So this is where I talked about um, this uh, thing of uh, a little bit of confusion sometimes arising be because you've got something that can be both an input and an output. But this is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to eliminate uh, the uh, USB main stereo from going back in on itself. And so here we're just sort of eliminating all of those things from uh, from that mix there. So if we take a look at how to do this on the uh, the Rodecaster, uh, come over to here. I'll click on this little cog icon at the top. Uh, and then we're going to go to outputs and then we'll go to uh, routing. Um, and then we've got all of the different channels. And if I go to USB one, uh, the options are main mix, mix minus or custom. I'll come to custom a in a little moment. Um, but uh, mix minus is the one that I always recommend people just put on as a default. Um, so although the main mix is going to be the default that comes when you get your Rodecaster Duo or Rodecaster Pro 2, um, I always recommend putting mix minus on because for me, it seems that uh, with the sort of things you may be wanting to do with it, if you have mix minus selected, it's probably not going to do you any harm if you don't want it or don't need it. Whereas if you have main mix selected and you're doing something with a communication app, uh, you definitely do want to have it uh, have it switched on. So um, yeah, I always would recommend just putting that on as a default. And you'll notice that I've got it on the USB one channel. I've got it on the chat, uh, USB two as well. Uh, and then also, we can put it onto the uh, the Bluetooth channel as well. So all of those uh, channels that uh, we've just looked at have the uh, mix minus uh, switched on. 
and that is what is represented uh, basically by these uh, these little crosses uh, just down here um, so uh, if we want to take a look at some slightly more complex stuff, I talked about uh, this instance where somebody was doing something where they have uh, their ecam feeding into Zoom, but then they've got the Discord back channel going on, but they've also got somebody joining on a phone. Well, if the Discord is a back channel, um, then it may be that uh, you also want to have it so that, you know, the other participants that are on Zoom um, don't hear what's going on in this Discord channel. So that is where we come into uh, what are called custom mix is in the uh, the roadcaster so uh, let's just say then that you want to sort of eliminate discord from those other channels we simply need to sort of basically toggle off discord um, for those other channels like the uh, the usb uh, main stereo the usb chat it's already sort of on mix minus anyway so it's not going back on itself but we might also want to eliminate it from the bluetooth channel so if that's the case what we need to do is use the custom mixes function uh, and i'll come to my uh, top down shot again and i'll show you how we can do this so let's say we want to go to the, uh, the secondary channel just here. Uh, instead of mix minus, we can go into custom. Now, when you are in the custom mix, uh, you can see that we've got a uh, basically a duplication of the, the, the main mixing board here. Um, but this is the mix that is going specifically um, from this channel um, to all of these, uh, oh, uh, beg your pardon, <laughs> let me correct that. This is the mix that is, uh, that is going into this particular channel. So actually what we want to do is we want to go into um, those uh, those other channels. Let me just step back because I've I've actually just misspoken. <laughs> uh, if I go back to this one, what we want to do is we want to eliminate Discord um, from those uh, uh, those other uh, other channels. So the first one we'll eliminate eliminate it from is the USB one uh, main stereo channel. So let me just go back over to here. Um, and the first one we want to eliminate it from would be the USB one. Uh, and here is where we'll go to custom. Uh, and once again, this is where you can adjust the uh, the custom levels. Uh, you can actually adjust the volume of these independently as well. So it may be that you might want to say, right, well, in the main mix, uh, maybe I want to actually eliminate the, uh, the secondary channel altogether. And in which case, you've got this button down at the bottom where you can press that to sort of unlink it and you can adjust the volume individually. Uh, but you can also just eliminate it altogether. Together. So what this means is that on this particular channel, uh, and let me just take that one out as well, uh, what we need to do is uh, we're, we're basically having on the USB one main stereo, we're putting the mix minus back on there by uh, just eliminating it from itself. But we've also removed that secondary channel. Uh, so if I just go back here, um, what we've done there is we're, we were just adjusting this channel and we removed itself to replicate the mix minus, but we also removed this channel as well. And we could go through and do that on all of those others as well, so that the Discord basically wasn't ever going through to those. I mentioned there as well that what you can do is uh, you can also adjust the levels, the volume levels. I'm always a bit wary, to be honest, of setting a different level on any one channel uh, relative to the others. And I'll tell you why, because here you can see this is the level of the fader um, for this uh, this chat channel. So you can see that as I move this fader up and down, um, this one also moves. So that's basically meaning that this is linked to that level. So what you're hearing on the USB one stereo uh, f is, is going to be exactly the same as the fader level here set um, for this particular uh, channel here, the, the, the chat channel. But what you can do is you can um, basically uh, unlink them. Um, and then you, what would happen is no matter what I do on this channel, uh, you would always have the exact same volume on there. Uh, you can also have them uh, linked but different. So if I put that back and I'll just click on this channel and I'll adjust that to a different level, uh, you can see now we've got a sort of little blue bar that's opened up uh, in the middle there. And the green level is the level of audio that is passing through to that channel. Uh, and the lower little fainter bar there is the level of the actual fader. And what that means is that as I move the fader, it's moving the level uh, on this one uh, relative to the fader. The problem with that is though, you can be in a situation where uh, let's say that this fader was at its normal level and let's say I wanted the audio a little bit quieter uh, going from the chat into specifically this channel. Uh, the issue with having this relative difference is that as I move this fader down, it may look to me like there is still audio, but at some point uh, that one is already at zero. Um, so I always think it would be great if on the main board here, uh, what we should have is a, uh, a little 
uh, some way of indicating the potential maximum and minimum that you've got across all of your uh, all of your different uh, channels. But uh, anyway, uh, for the time being, all I'll say is just be wary about setting those relative levels because you have to be conscious about you know potentially you know <laughs> on the Rodecaster Pro 2 you know up to uh, 11 or 9 channels you need to be sort of conscious about where those relative levels are so that you don't inadvertently put something to zero. So I tend to avoid those altogether. Um, but that is the uh, the way that you would do that to sort of eliminate uh, something from Discord. Uh, now, I mentioned as well about uh, the potential for the speakers to have an issue. Uh, and there's one specific uh, use case where you um, you may want to be using Zoom all day. You know, a lot of my uh, coaching clients are basically doing consultancy and they're on Zoom all the time or they're presenting on Zoom. Um, and so the key things for them are really the, uh, obviously the headphones that they're monitoring in, uh, but then it's their mic, their They've got Ecamm running and then they've got Zoom running. Um, and if somebody is on uh, Zoom all day, uh, then often, you know, headphones are not the uh, most uh, favorite thing to wear because, you know, wearing uh, earbuds all day long is not necessarily the best, uh, the best idea. So a lot of my clients like to use their external speakers. But there's always this issue of the audio from the speakers uh, obviously feeding back into uh, the, uh, the microphone. Um, and so what I'm talking about here is specifically uh, this channel here. So this is where you can plug speakers into the back of the Rodecaster uh, so that you can uh, monitor the audio. And I mentioned at the beginning that there is this default setting in the Rodecaster, which is that if you've got an open mic, uh, any one of the mics that's plugged in, it's going to automatically mute that speaker. Obviously, if you're on a Zoom call, you want your mic to be open. And so that's kind of defeating the whole uh, purpose, isn't it? Um, so what you want to do is be able to turn off the um, uh, turn off that feature. So let's take a quick look at how to do that. Um, if I come to my Rodecaster, and again, you know, this is a feature for a reason. <laughs> so I'll tell you why, uh, to, just to be careful about it. But if you go to outputs and go to monitor, um, this one is the default uh, behavior. So that normally when you get your Rodecaster, this screen will look like that. It will say auto mute monitor output. And as it says, when enabled, monitor output will be muted when a microphone channel fader is lifted to prevent feedback. So if you've either got a, uh, a microphone muted or the fader is down, at zero, uh, then the speakers will kind of open. Um, but as soon as you've got a, a live mic, as it were, um, then uh, yeah, it's going to uh, it's going to uh, shut off the speakers. So you want to disable that one. But then, of course, uh, that opens up the potential issue that it's highlighting, whereby your mic uh, audio is going to be going through the speakers. In fact, all the audio is going to be going through the speakers and feeding back into the microphone and causing a whole uh, a whole issue there. Um, now, what we can do is we can actually sort of fix the Zoom part of it um, in Zoom, and we can fix the microphone potential for feedback uh, in the Rodecaster itself. So what we're going to do is we want to actually, if I just come back over, over to, uh, to this once more. Uh, what we want to do is basically eliminate our microphone from that particular mix. So let's look at that. It's the same process that we've just uh, we've just talked about with those other mixes. Um, but if I come over to here, I'm going to leave that one off for the moment. Um, come back out of this, and then if I go into the uh, the routing uh, and we go to the monitor, what we can do is we can select uh, custom. Uh, and then we can just simply tap on there to eliminate our microphone. Now everything is going through the speakers. So all of these other things are going through the speakers exactly as they are set to here. Um, but the one thing that is not going through is our microphone. Okay, so uh, that means that uh, that audio is is not coming through. Um, then what uh, you would want to do is you would want to make sure that we're not getting this feedback in Zoom itself. Um, and this is where we come back to those uh, those advanced settings because in Zoom what we can do is we can go back over to the settings that we've already just looked at uh, and that setting just down at the bottom Where's it gone? It's not showing up. <laughs> Hang on. The one down at the bottom of Zoom, original sound for musicians, uh, you'll notice just down there that there is, uh, as well as that high fidelity music mode, so I'm looking at the Zoom settings right at the bottom, uh, we've got the high fidelity music mode, uh, it's stereo audio are still on, but there is that one in the middle there, echo cancellation. Now, if you then apply that echo cancellation, it will mean that the audio is coming through the speakers from Zoom, so you can hear it, uh, but Zoom is removing it from the, back, the, the return feed. Um, and so that is how, if you do want to use your speakers and have your you know, Zoom call coming out over your speakers, um, but you're using a Rodecaster with Zoom, that is, uh, that is exactly how you, would, uh, how you would do that. 
Um, so that is uh, that is a sort of run through of how to set these things up. Some common issues that uh, folks have is first of all, I mentioned the one about uh, you know people on Zoom can't hear me, um, and that is sorry can't hear the uh, the audio, and that is that setting where we've got the Zoom background noise suppression. So this is kind of like one of the uh, the, the the biggest ones. There is also often these issues with uh, with slapback where you're getting this sort of repetition, um, and that's caused by uh, not having mixed minus on. So if you don't have mixed minus, uh, that's going to be uh, one of the common uh, causes of that. Um, and but incidentally, usually uh, the slapback would be, uh, you know, at exactly the same volume as your fade is set to. So your, you know, zoom audio coming into zoom, uh, to, to um, the roadcaster. If you uh, don't have mix minus on, then it's just going to come in and it's going to go straight back at whatever the level of the fader is set to for that channel uh, for the mix. But I've had this on enough occasions for it to be worth me mentioning, um, where somebody said, I'm getting this slap back, but it's like really, really faint. It's almost just like, uh, uh, you know, as if it's uh, it's, it's a, lot, a lot quieter than the original audio. And in all cases, the reason for this particular in this thing has been that they've been using over the ear headphones, something like this, and uh, the, the uh, with uh, not with a boom mic, but with uh, this kind of mic. Um, and actually, the <laughs> the microphone has been picking up the audio out of their headphones. So if you're hearing slap back where it's like really faint, um, it's worth just checking that it's not your your headphones. And so uh, in that case, um, what uh, what the solution was was just to turn down their headphone knob on their Rodecaster so that there wasn't so much it wasn't so loud in their headphones. But I mentioned that because, as I say, I've had four or five people book calls with me to try and resolve this issue and in each case that was the uh, the issue so worth just uh, just mentioning there um, the other thing that uh, that causes issues is where people say like one cannot hear the other so Ecamm cannot hear Zoom or Zoom cannot hear Ecamm something like that um, and this is usually caused by them being both on the same channel because if you think about what Mix Minus is doing it's saying that like everything that is coming down into Eka into the Roadcaster um, is not going to be fed back down that particular channel so if you've got Ecamm on the main stereo and you've got Zoom on the main stereo those are both feeding uh, audio like into the roadcaster but then the roadcaster saying right well anything that's come down that channel i'm not going to send back so this is why they need to be on separate channels because it means that uh, you can hear zoom you can hear ecamm but they can't hear each other if they're on the same channel because uh, the mix minus is just sort of eliminating it so that is another common uh, issue that uh, we have. Uh, there's one uh, other one here that is um, specific to Ecamm, actually, which is in the Ecamm menus at the top, the Ecamm menu bar, you've got in the output menu, you've got something called audio monitor. Now, I rarely use this. There's only one use case that I've at the moment got for it, which is when I'm using my uh, Ecamm with my YOLO uh, in-stream to actually pass the Ecamm audio uh, into, into that. Um, uh, over the HDMI cable that I'm plugging into it. But that is a really sort of niche use case. And actually the audio monitor is not um, zero latency. Nothing's really zero latency, but uh, the, the audio monitor in particular is definitely not. Um, and so you're going to really notice that uh, that difference. So uh, I think some people think that the audio monitor is a great way to actually, you know, do live, you know, monitoring in the same way that we have our headphones plugged into our Rodecasters, but actually it's not really suitable for that, uh, that purpose. And so there's been a number of instances where people have got their audio settings in Ecamm perfectly correct as we looked at them, you know, with uh, the things like the, uh, you know, the, the sound levels and the, uh, the speakers there. Um, but then the, uh, the, the output that they've got uh, for that audio monitoring is also set to something. So I would always recommend for the output menu, go to audio monitor and just make sure that that is, uh, that is off. Uh, the other thing that can catch people out actually with, uh, with these is let's say that you plan to use Ecamm with the main stereo as I've got here. Um, sometimes you may see something that says same as system and then brackets Rodecaster Pro 2 main stereo or Rodecaster Duo main stereo. If ever you've got something that's the same as system, although it might well have the Rodecaster Duo or Rodecaster main stereo in the, uh, the that, that, that name as well, um, because it's set as the same as the system, if ever anything was to change in your system audio, it would also be changing in this application. And that can actually really, uh, really catch people out because sometimes the system audio can seemingly have a little mind of its own. And, you know, you might get the output changed to something else, or you might plug a device in and system audio suddenly switches to it. And so you definitely want to be very, uh, you know, explicit about saying uh, the speakers are the Rodecaster Duo main stereo or the 
uh, Rodecaster Pro 2 main stereo rather than anything that includes system audio brackets, if that makes sense, because uh, yeah, that means that it can just change uh, if your system audio changes. So that is uh, one other thing that I found can, uh, can sort of catch, uh, catch folks out as well. Um, so let me just uh, check in with uh, some of the uh, the comments and let me know if you've got any specific audio routing uh, scenarios that you would like to uh, to run through as well. Uh, I've not really checked in with the chat at all. <laughs> hey, Dan, great to see you here. Um, as you can see, my uh, my beauty sleep worked. <laughs> uh, we were chatting last night on uh, LinkedIn, so uh, hence that uh, thing. <laughs> not, not, not a comment out of nowhere. Um, <laughs> uh, hey, Marine X, great to see you here as well as always. Uh, David, first in queue. It's funny, actually, in my ecam, you're showing up a second, but I know that you were first because I responded to your original comment. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, hello, James Hatcher. Great to see you. Thank you for uh, stopping by. And my comments, they seem as though they're... It's got a mind of its own on my computer today. There we go. It's coming up. Um, and uh, there we go. We've got the audio issues sorted out. Um... So how would it work? Mike goes into the Rocaster, Rocaster goes into the Cal digit, which goes into the Mac. Uh, correct, yeah, I didn't actually talk about the connection of the Rocaster itself. Um, I have um, I have my ro both Rodecaster channels uh, plugged into uh, my, it's actually my, I've got a Cal digit element hub, which is the uh, like a USB-C, uh, USB hub. Um, so I'm using, uh, I'm using that. But yeah, it, it needs, it can go into, it can go into the Cal digit, no problem. Um, this is that's a really good point, actually. I'm glad you mentioned that because because um, sometimes that you might find that you've got some sort of audio issue, or uh, you know the the, the Rocaster is not showing up. Or I had it myself with when I had the Streamer X and I plugged that into my dock alongside the, uh, the 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 Duo, and it was kind of like one of the channels of the Duo just sort of dropped out. But it wasn't anything to do with the Duo or the Streamer X. It was because of the way that I'd configured these in the dock and trying, you know, putting them in uh, a different uh, uh, scenario uh, solved the issue. So as part of troubleshooting, which is you know the, the point of this stream is to talk about that um it's it's worth mentioning you know if ever you do have any issue with the roadcaster not showing up or you can't see all of the channels or something's not working it's always good to just try these things out but uh, you know to test them in different uh, different ports sometimes you know you might think you've got all of these different usb ports but actually it's all going down one single sort of usb uh, bus uh, and so uh, that can that can cause issues so uh, but yeah in terms of uh, in terms of how this is set up for me i do indeed have this going into a Caldigit element hub and that is just plugged in uh, over Thunderbolt 4 into the my uh, my computer so that is how I'm uh, I'm connecting those up um so uh can you guide us to those of us who broadcast live podcasts um uh, so if you're broadcasting a live podcast I mean that's kind of uh, if you're asking for the, the sort of guidance on how to do that, depending on where you're recording to, um, you can record on the device itself. And by the way, when I talked about the inputs and outputs, uh, there was two that uh, were kind of left off there. Um, one of them was the sound pads on the Rodecaster. So obviously you can play audio that would technically be coming into the mix. I kind of left it out because it's uh, it's it's not one of the sort of cables you connect. <laughs> so it's a little bit less, uh, you know, it's a little bit more tangible in itself. Um, and the other kind of input and output um, would be the recording. So if I come into the routing just uh, quickly, I will come back to your uh, your question. Uh, wrong uh, wrong page, <laughs> wrong scene rather. Um, if we come back to the uh, the routing here, um, and I go to outputs routing, um, you can see that we've also got one for recording. Um, so what that means is you can choose what is going into your recording when you're recording on the device itself. So if you're recording a podcast, like when I did my uh, live stream of backstage podcast, which I need to get back into doing, um, I would do that as a live stream to LinkedIn and Amazon. And obviously all the audio was routing through here, but I would also record locally as a backup onto the Rodecaster itself. Um, and so, yeah, you can set custom mixes. Like if you want to do any of that, you know, maybe you don't want a Discord back channel coming into your recording. Uh, you could just remove that. Maybe you don't want this other channel going in you can decide exactly what you want to go into your uh, your recording as well um, so from an uh, from a routing point of view uh, coming back to your question then um, depending on how you're broadcasting your live stream if you're doing a live stream uh, 
I'll just use my setup, whether it's Ecamm or whether it's OBS or whatever video platform you're using. Um, you would just do basically what I run through with having Ecamm on its own or OBS or whatever on its own dedicated channel. Um, that is going into uh, into YouTube in any way, so streaming from that platform, presumably. Um, but then it could be coming back into your computer into some other recording software. Maybe you're doing something like that, or maybe you're playing audio uh, from the Rodecaster itself, you know, for intro music or whatever. Uh, that's one of the few things that I do use the sound pads for is for that uh, that kind of uh, uh, the, the the intro music for my podcast to be able to sort of fade it in and out. Um, so that is how you would uh, that is how you would uh, would set that up. And then, uh, as I say, yeah, it's just re would be recording to the device um, as well. Um, I'm not sure if that uh, if that uh, made uh, made sense or not, but let me know if uh, if it raises any other questions. Um, is it um, is it intro is it possible to auto enable disable multiple headphone solo with one button um right okay so you c you can't do it on the rocaster but actually you can do it with um the stream deck and uh <laughs> the name has escaped me this is one of these uh <laughs> these moments the name has escaped me uh let me just quickly find it because there was a great video by um a great guy who has been in the ecamm community for ages and has been on my stream before and my mind has just gone a blank <laughs> but it is definitely worth me pointing this out because you can use midi controls on the um uh the stream deck to control the um uh the rocaster and uh where has it gone i'm just trying to find this now uh neil neil faramon there we go let me just get this video for you because this explains how to uh, how to set it up uh, so that you can uh, have your basically press a button on the roadcaster and uh, have that play into um uh, sorry, sorry press a button on your stream deck and have that operate these mute uh, buttons and so on so i'm just going to drop that video into the uh, into the chat there um but the point about this and the the the, the thing to note here which is uh, which is relevant and it's something that i haven't mentioned today uh, i mentioned about the audio routing and the custom mixes uh, and this is re related to um, uh, daryl's point here uh, which is that um when i want to eliminate something from the mix so i want my discord channel here i do want to be able to hear what's going on on discord but i don't want that to be passing through on the stream however i didn't want to go in and create a custom mix uh, in here and in the routing and then go into the usb one and have that custom mix set up to eliminate it because there are times when i do want that you you know, maybe it's a case that I'm in a Zoom call, uh, for example, and I want my Ecamm audio to go into Zoom, uh, but I don't want all of the Zoom participant audio in case they unmute at random or whatever. I don't want that all to be passed through into Ecamm as a default if I'm also recording the session. But if somebody's got a question in, in Zoom and I want to kind of bring them up on stage, as it were, and have that audio pass through, I want the option of being able to sort of quickly uh, enable or disable um, that, uh, that option so that the audio does pass through. So the way that I uh, do that is that all of these channels here, let me just uh, switch these off. Um, these little buttons down at the bottom, uh, you've got two buttons at the bottom of each fader. Uh, this button, the green one with a picture of an ear on it is the listen button. And what that means is that you as the, the host on the roadcaster, as in the person that is plugged into headphone socket number one, uh, you have the option to basically isolate any of these tracks and just monitor it or listen to it on its own. So if I was to press, uh, at the moment I can hear all of the channels, I can hear my uh, mic audio, for example, in my monitors. But if I was to just press on this one here all i would be able to hear would be the uh, discord and now everything else has gone out of my ears i can only hear that however you can listen to multiple different channels so the way i set this up is that i basically ha listen to all of them and uh, this will make more sense in a moment so you can see down at the bottom as well here we've got this indicator that these are all green because i am listening to all these channels so uh, at the moment nothing's different for me from having these all unchecked because i can still just hear everything where this uh, comes in to uh, play though is that the other button on each of these is mute and what that does is it mutes it in the mix um, and so if i was to have this discord level up um, because this is open at the moment you would be able to hear the discord if somebody said something but i'm going to quickly <laughs> mute that before they take that opportunity um, and now this is muted um, and you can see it's gone red there so it's muted so that means that no matter what the level of this fader for my discord channel is um, it's not going to pass through into the mix but 
because I've got the listen button on, it means I can still hear it. So this is the way that I do it in a Zoom call as well. If I'm on a Zoom where it's like a Zoom workshop and I don't want the audio from Zoom to pass through into Ecamm, then I'll just have it muted. But at the point where I sort of bring someone up onto the stage, as it were, um, and want the audio to pass through, then I can press this button and then that means that the audio will then uh, will then pass through. So um, that is just to say as to, uh, I'm guessing you already uh, already know this, um, but that is just to say what the uh, the enable and disable um, uh, the mute and listen uh, thing is for, um, uh, you know, to, to, to folks who may want to know that. So actually having a button that just basically does that on your stream deck uh, that is why you may want to do that especially if the rowcaster is not uh, uh you know not right to hand you could activate this from stream deck also if you had a sort of multiple configuration here set up uh, then you could do that with uh, with stream deck as well um so uh, so that is uh, that is what that is for <laughs> uh let me see where we're up to uh, hey, Chris, thanks for stopping by. I'm glad you uh, found this useful. And uh, if anything is unclear, of course, just uh, let me uh, let me know if uh, if you need any specific use case uh, talked about. Um, let's see. What I mean is if I want to solo channel one and four by only pressing one button instead of two. Uh, so yeah, um, I, I'm catching up with that. So yeah, that is um, that would be that video from Neil. Uh, he did a great um, a great job of explaining how to do it, and he's also got a great guide that goes with it. So if you check that video that I've put in the in the chat, um, then you can uh, you can uh, there's a guide that you can get that basically talks about you know mapping the MIDI MIDI across because you do have to map certain MIDI channels to the stream deck but uh, he makes it very uh, very clear exactly how to do that um uh, so uh, you used to use a software solution for your routing in mind uh, which is better assuming rocaster duo or rocaster pro 2 um I used to use uh, uh, Loopback, so that's what I was using for my uh, my audio routing, and I was using Audio Hijack for some uh, background noise removal and a couple of things like that. Um, so uh, the hardware solution, I mean, things like Loopback work just fine. You know, I've, I, what I found is that um, people calling me with uh, with issues about their Rocaster, um, there was a lot more people calling with issues about Loopback because here at least you've got some sort of tangible device uh, and you can see you know when audio comes in you can see the levels bouncing whereas um yeah loop, loop back can cause issues in itself and and then it's a lot more abstract because it's kind of happening in the background and you can't even see anything and you know can't check a plug <laughs> so so that can be uh, an issue in itself uh, as well but i prefer the hardware option um ha but when it comes to the duo versus the the pro 2 um i'm not sure if this is the question if it's duo versus pro 2 for me, I said this at the time when they released it, it really feels like the duo was designed for me because, you know, it's got these four faders for the four things I use. I don't have lots of mics plugged in. I'm not doing a big podcast with, you know, multiple people. Um, and the duo, just having two mics in um, is, is, is perfectly adequate for what I need. And so I really find that this is uh, this is ideal even with the rocaster pro 2 it's only got six faders on uh, but i still have to think a lot more about like which is the one, right one sometimes especially if i you know playing around with things and testing stuff out but this one it's very clear i've got my mic uh, color coding the buttons by the way a uh, little top tip there uh, orange for ecamm blue for zoom pur purple for uh, discord it's very clear which one i'm uh, i'm adjusting um, the other thing that I love about the Duo is on the front of it, um, it's also got this little uh, jack on the front, which is for a, uh, for a headset. But what you can also do is you can actually plug a lav mic directly into that. So I do sometimes do things where I've not got this mic, but I just want to have a, a lovelier mic instead. Um, the other thing that I should mention, uh, which is the last sort of recorded video that I put out, uh, was that uh, you can now use USB mics uh, with the Rodecaster. I should say you can use Rode USB mics. So what that means is that if you've got a, a Rodecaster Duo um, and you've got your two mics plugged in, but you just want to add in like an extra, uh, an extra person or something, like that for you know an ad hoc podcast um then you can use a usb mic plug it into the secondary channel um and then you get access to um to all of the onboard processing of the mic uh, so then in theory you could have three mics two xlr and one over usb and then even uh, you know another, another mic plugged into the front there is you know little shotgun mics that are you know 3.5 mil jacks 
So you could potentially have something uh, like that. So in theory, the Rocaster Duo could have uh, four mics. Um, but for me, the Rocaster Duo is, is just the perfect device. Um, the Rocaster Pro 2, I still obviously love it. It's got all of the same onboard processing. Uh, this one is my lighting feature for today in the background. Um, but uh, but that one is basically, you've just got those two extra XLR and um, uh, you know inputs on the back to uh, to to use if, if you need them. Uh, I always say this though, the Rocaster Duo and Rocaster Pro 2, the Duo doesn't have Pro in the name, but it is every bit as much as Pro device in terms of the complex audio routing, the audio processing and all of that. It's still just a, it's basically a, I think of it more like a Rocaster Pro Mini, but uh, <laughs> you, you couldn't uh, you couldn't put that, you couldn't fit that name on the uh, on the device itself because it's nice and small. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, uh, where are we with the questions? Hello, Curry. Great to see you here. I just started, deci I decided to start a video podcast. I bought the short MV7 Rocaster Duo and I have a Mac Air. Should I use StreamYard to record my podcast? What are your thoughts on uh, gear? So I use Ecamm Live to record my videos. So all of my videos are done live in one take anyway, even the, the recorded ones. I just do them all in one take with uh, with Ecamm. Uh, I absolutely love Ecamm Live. Um, it is It has enabled me to do so much uh, aside from just the video production stuff, you know, for, for YouTube. YouTube, but you know just going into um uh uh, my uh, my uh, teams meetings zoom meetings or whatever they are um then uh, then it's been great for that as well um if you are recording a podcast though streamyard is great the difference between streamyard and uh ecamm live is ecamm is the software that is sitting on your computer whereas streamyard is obviously a cloud-based thing you know effectively you know you're going into streamyard through the browser so there is something to uh, think about there two things to think about uh, and by the way you mentioned that you're doing a video podcast if you are doing a video podcast with guests Ecamm Live, the pro version has interview mode. Uh, StreamYard obviously can bring guests in as well through uh, through that. So uh, that would be another another sort of consideration as to uh, as to how that would uh, how that would work. Um, and also, of course, if you are going to um, if you're going to be live streaming your podcast, uh, you can do that from uh, from both of those as well. Uh, you mentioned that you've got a MacBook Air. Depending on how old the MacBook Air is, honestly, the new MacBook Airs. You can still run Ecamm on it as well, um, but if it's an older MacBook Air, then um, then yeah, having something that's browser-based might be a better a better option. Um, so so a few a few options there for how you actually technically do it. I'm a, I'm a total Ecamm fanboy, and I make no apologies for that. It is a fantastic app, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, the, the platform is one thing. When it comes to um, what are my thoughts on the gear, um, you know, the, we, we, I've had this conversation with a, a few people just recently, uh, and specifically around uh, microphones, cameras, and all of these other things. For me, the things to get, uh, the, the important thing is like the lighting. For the first um, eight months on YouTube, and by the way, uh, so far I've been on for just coming up for a year, and two and a half years, I guess. Uh, but the majority of my videos went out in, definitely went out in the first year, if not the first sort of eight months. Um, and so probably around 300 of the 450 videos were just in that short time, uh, that, you know, that first eight months. Um, but they were all filmed on a 10 year old Canon EOS 60D. Now I'm using a Sony ZV-E10, um, you know, with a Sigma lens, but originally it was just a Canon EOS 60D with the stock uh, stock lens that came with it, the kit lens. Um, and that was actually going into Ecamm at 720p. Um, and then Ecamm did the scaling up to uh, 1080. Um, um, did it make that much difference to my uh, my content as soon as I got the uh, the better camera? Uh, not really. You know, uh, probably there are people who would say, "Oh yeah, I noticed the difference in resolution." But generally, people were watching for the uh, for the information rather than uh, rather than that. So uh, there is something to be uh, to be conscious of there. Um, I was also talking actually with Dan, uh, asking about mics just uh, just yesterday on uh, on LinkedIn, and um, yeah, same with that. I had the MV7 sitting just over there behind me absolutely uh, wonderful mic i bought that because i uh, i didn't have a mixer at the time it can work over usb but it can also work over um uh, xlr as well so uh, that's that's the reason for that decision but i did know that you know good quality audio was uh, was a thing so you've obviously got the the mv7 as well fantastic choice um uh, th we were talking yesterday about you know would we would we upgrade to something like the uh, the sm7b which is you know the gold standard in podcasting, you know, apparently. Um, and it's only really, you know, because that's what everyone seems to have, you know, the, the top podcasters have that I think people are drawn to it. Really, can we tell the difference? You know, if you are listening to a podcast, uh, and whenever I see people do these side by sides of one mic versus another, um, you know, 
yes, there are differences. Yes, you can hear it. And I know that there are going to be people who are watching who are going to say, like, oh, I can definitely tell the difference. But what I mean is, does it really make that much of a difference to your, uh, your actual content? And that's why I actually had the MV7 for, you know, so long. Everything on my desk, you know, changed. I got better lights. I got different, you know, things. I did add the camera in eventually and, you know, changed my setup. But the MV7 was kind of there uh, centrally to everything and, and didn't change. Now, I've got the pod mic now. Uh, Rode sent me this for evaluation and for review. Um, and uh, I do think that, you know, they sound uh, pretty similar to me. I don't think there's a, I, I can't tell a huge amount of difference between the MV7 versus the pod mic when I've gone through and done all the processing with the Rodecaster, you know, so maybe just when they're sort of naked, uh, then there is, uh, there is more of a difference, but I can't sort of tell that difference necessarily with the way I've got it set up. If I'm recommending somebody now between the two of them, um, I do think that the PodMite USB would be a better choice if you are going to be using it over USB because of the onboard processing. This is not the case with you, Corey, though. You've obviously got the Roadcaster, so uh, ignore <laughs> ignore all of this. Um, but if you were lucky, if somebody didn't have the, the MV7 and was making the choice now, I do think that this one is a better choice because of the onboard processing over USB, and it's like at a, a lower price point as well. But if you've got the MV7, would I change? Definitely not. It's a fantastic mic. Um, um, so this is all roundabout because it's been on my mind uh, just recently. Uh, when it comes to gear, though, um, the main thing is basically getting uh, basic getting good lighting that can make any camera uh, look great. Um, the thing, the reason why I get so enthusiastic about the Rodecaster is because of all the options it opens up. So for me, the mic is the thing that I just speak into that gets my audio, you know, heard. Uh, the camera is just what I use to, you know, be, be here and doing what I'm doing. Um, but it's the Rodecaster and the Stream Deck are the things that I make my videos about and I get so enthusiastic about because they really do open up whole worlds of new options for me in the same way that Ecamm Live does. So um, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a rambling, uh, <laughs> rambling, uh, 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 bit of uh, stuff there about, uh, about gear, but that is my thoughts on the gear. Um, the other thing that I'll mention about this is there is this thing, gear acquisition syndrome, which we talk about, which is this thing of constantly needing the next new shiny thing or the, uh, uh, you know, the want it, feeling like you need this bit of tech and, or maybe seeing other people have it and wanting to go out and buy it. Um, and it is a, a real thing. You know, we do get this, you know, sparkly, shiny object syndrome thing where something comes out. And you think, oh, I need to get that that thing. Um, but um, there is a sort of balance between this. And I had this with uh, a couple of coaching clients in the, actually in the Take One Tech Academy. And uh, they were talking about this where they were just getting themselves set up. They'd got a camera, they'd got uh, the mic and, and the Rodecaster. But then we were talking about, um, you know, adding in a teleprompter for Zoom. Now, that is a really great thing to add in if you're on Zoom calls. Like right now, I'm actually looking at myself so I can see what you see to make sure I'm on the right scene. But when I'm in a Zoom call, if I switch over to here, I've got my teleprompter in front of me. So if I'm on a Zoom call, I would be looking at my, uh, my, my uh, the other person in this screen. And then down below, I would have their screen share. So if we're troubleshooting something, I'd be able to see their screen. And I've got my, uh, my main screen over here that, you know, when I'm sh sharing screen, I'm sharing uh, this screen over here. Um, but the teleprompter is a great little addition. So there was this instance where, you know, I, somebody was saying they were going to get this teleprompter and uh, they went ahead and bought it and they bought the, uh, the monitor for it. Uh, but then they didn't have enough ports on their, com on their computer. So then it was a case of needing to add in another dock. And then uh, the positioning of the teleprompter wasn't quite, quite right. And they couldn't get it quite right without buying an arm for it. And it, there was this feeling of there was just one more thing to buy. And it can have that feeling of being uh, never ending. Honestly, I wouldn't need to add anything more to my setup right now. And it's for me, it almost feels like the perfect setup, you know, having the teleprompter with an extra monitor, having the Rodecaster, the Stream Decks, I've got everything that I need. So uh, just on the point of gear, if at any point it does feel like, oh, there's always something more, I do definitely think that plateaus once you've got the things set up. It's just that there's all these little things that crop up as you're getting things set up that you hadn't envisaged. Uh, I'm not saying that this is uh, an issue you've got, but I know that people do have this where it's like, oh, now I need to buy this other dock or I need to go and buy a little uh, a little clamp to attach a light or whatever it happens to be. There's always some little thing, it seems like. But that definitely levels out. And I've now got, you know, the same sort of setup generally, uh, apart from stuff that I'm I'm testing because I happen to have a tech YouTube channel. Um, then generally, I've got all the stuff that, uh, that I need here. So... <laughs> um, Hi there, is it possible to uh, mirror the display to an iPad through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi? Um, if you are talking about Ecamm Live, uh, well, actually, no, forget that. <laughs> Let me step back again. Is it possible to mirror a display to an iPad? It is. If you go into your, um, your settings uh, over here, 
So if you come into your uh, Mac settings, and by the way, I'm assuming Mac, I'm not sure about PC, but <laughs> on uh, here, if you go into displays, um, then you can um, uh, connect. If you've got a modern iPad using a, a recent uh, Mac OS, um, then you have got an, an option to connect uh, an iPad um, uh, through what they call sidecar. And that basically turns your iPad into an extended display. Uh, so if you've got your iPad um, uh, connected, you can you could do that. Um, and then it would just show up as another display here. So in that case, you can then mirror. Uh, it would just act like a display. You can mirror the display and position it wherever you want. Um, if uh, I wouldn't assume this is the case but if you are talking about specifically with um uh, with ecamm for example which is the software that i'm using um then uh, there is a, an option in the output menu again you would need the things selected uh you would need the ipad connected as a, in sidecar mode but then you could go into the output menu uh, of ecamm and then video monitor and then there's an option in there to uh, to output the ecamm output to that uh, that particular display uh, I'm not sure if that answers the question or if I was even on the right track there, but <laughs> uh, but yeah, sidecar is the thing to do it. Now I'm just wondering, actually, sidecar, you uh, you just need to have the um, uh, that doesn't need a wire, actually. Yeah, you can do that. Uh, you can do that completely uh, completely wireless wirelessly. Um, so one more. Is there a non Stream Deck way to control the Rodecaster Pro Two? Um, there is a uh anything that controls it with midi basically oh you could do it with the the road central app i don't think the road central app allows you to toggle on the uh the the mute and the listen buttons though i think that that is uh, that is only can only be done through midi you can do a lot of the stuff with the road central app um so that allows you to change you know the audio settings and uh audio processing and all that kind of stuff but i don't think that that can allow you to do what you were specifically asking for which was toggle on the uh, you know the listen commands and stuff like that um however it does just it is uh, a midi controller so um if you get uh, there is a there is an app for the Mac again, which is uh, like a MIDI controller app. And then you would be able to have something in there potentially, and then maybe assign a keyboard shortcut. Uh, I maybe need to uh, maybe need to test that out and do a video on it. But uh, anything, anything that can use MIDI basically will, uh, will do it. Um, hey, Tanju, great to see you here. Uh, to take your Discord channel, for example, is a configuration possible to mute all other channels going to it by the press of a button. Ah, so uh, this would be um, the, uh, th oh, actually, just if it's only just for, hmm, you can mute, th the thing that I'm talking about to mute things in the mix is basically allowing me to listen to them, but it's muting it to go to all of the other places. So if we are wanting to do something kind of like a little bit different to that, which is you want to be able to press one button and then just suddenly mute everything going into uh, Discord, for example, um, then there is no one button that you can press on here. It would come back to that same example that uh, I was just uh, mentioning with um, uh, the name, the name, <laughs> Durrell, uh, about um, being able to do it with a Stream Deck. So you could do it that way. You could have the Stream Deck. Oh, no, actually, wait a minute. No, you could do that because that would be... Um, that would be doing the same thing. No, we, uh, the, the answer to that then is no. There is no one button that you can press that's suddenly going to mute everything, basically turn, toggling on and off a custom mix. Uh, that isn't possible, I don't think, in, uh, uh, with, a, with a single button is the answer to that. Um, be a good feature request that, though, would be to, uh, to be able to open up access to these things from uh, like an external, uh, an external source. Anyway, I'm going, I'm, uh, <laughs> my mind's whirring now. Uh, the, one of the things that I love about the Rodecaster is like how much power it's got and the, uh, the potential for future updates as well. So, you know, there are new features being added in case in point, you know, USB mics now work with it. So it's great to, uh, to see that and to see where this may, uh, may go in the, uh, in the future. Um, they are indeed chris are these principles audio principles the same for ms teams they exactly are um one thing to note is if i go back to my uh my audio settings for the um uh, for zoom if i bring these ones back up um in teams you've got very similar settings so you're going to set your your speaker and your microphone just note that they also have their own thing which is a bit like this 
original sound from musicians um and it's it may even say musicians in the in the setting i can't remember exactly what it is but also it's a little bit simpler it doesn't have high fidelity music mode or stereo audio it's basically just you're switching it on one of the good things about it is once you've done it in settings you don't need to toggle it on every time in the meeting which is a little bit annoying frankly with uh, with zoom i've automated it with keyboard maestro to go and click on the screen but uh, that's that's me um but uh, there is the echo cancellation option so again as i mentioned if you want to listen to teams over your speakers and you don't want it the audio and it's going through the roadcaster but you don't want the audio feeding back then just look for the echo cancellation setting in teams uh so yeah i probably should have got those settings uh, queued up actually but uh, yeah it is the uh, it is the same um let's have a look um let's see where we're up to with the uh, chat hey scott great to see you here thanks for stopping by let me come back over here uh, I have a Streamer X and can toggle between three mics on the single audio input XLR, a wireless road mic and a pair of headphones with mic. Can I toggle between two inputs on uh, channels one and two? Um, here's the thing, actually, with um, uh, Road Central, when you're using the I just realized to took down your comments. <laughs> when you're using Road Central with Streamer X, um, that pressing the button on the Streamer X does indeed act as a toggle between those three. But just in case you weren't aware, if you download Unify, um, you do actually have access to all three of those mics at the same time, and you can choose between them. Um, with Unify, then again, um, you can do some slightly more complex um, audio routing. Um, and uh, so you, you can actually use Unify in conjunction with the Rodecaster if you want to have like extra audio routing but let me just uh, double check with your thing can i toggle between two inputs on channels uh one and two um i'm i'm, I'm just now <laughs> realizing i'm not quite sure what you mean by that can you toggle between two inputs on channels one and two uh do you, uh, you mean the i see what you mean you mean on the the usb one and two i guess that's what you uh, what you mean um so no, there isn't a toggle in there, but what you can do is you can set that up in Unify. Uh, you know, I, I did a stream all about Unify, so what it's probably better me doing is actually linking back to that one because um, if I open that all up now, it might cause a few issues because um, I've got some other audio routing stuff going on. So if I open Unify up midstream, uh, depending on what I've got set there, it may, uh, it may sort of uh, break a few things. Uh, which I realize is not much help, but uh, you can set up custom routing on uh, on Unify to do some of this stuff on on there. Uh, whereas there's there's no button on the Stream X that toggles between uh, between those. Uh, I feel like I haven't really answered that question very well, Scott. But um, I have got a, a, a video about Unify, which may well be the the answer to that. Um, oh, thanks, Chris. Sorry, I've just seen your super chat come in. Thank you so much. Uh, that is much appreciated. I'm glad it's been uh, uh, <laughs> glad it's been a help. And yeah, obviously, any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, by the way, uh, this goes for everyone as well, of course. If you do have any uh, questions about anything that I've uh, uh, covered today, then you can certainly go ahead and check out the Discord. Uh, you can get all of these uh, questions answered in there. Whoops, I'm just about to press the wrong button. You can also book a consultation call with me. <laughs> so, as I say. This this is what a large portion of my consultation calls seem to be. They seem to be uh, resolving uh, roadcaster issues and audio issues, audio routing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but the button that I meant to press was this one. Uh, feel free to uh, join the Take One Tech community. It's uh, free to join. It's over on Discord. And uh, in there, there is a channel specifically for, uh, for roadcaster and all of this uh, good stuff. But yeah, thanks once again for the super chat. Uh, Chris, I, uh, I really, appreciate the, uh, really appreciate the support. Um, let me see where I'm up to. Curry, uh, have a, an M1 Mac, and I will also be using it uh, for video. Oh, the, you're you're uh, you're good to go. Um, I'm just suddenly losing the context of <laughs> the, the original comment. Uh, oh yeah, I see you started a video podcast. Great, great. Uh, if you've got a honestly an iPhone 14 Pro Max, I mean let's face it the, the video quality of that is is fantastic so uh yeah it's very easy to get caught up in somebody saying this camera is better than that camera and you need to do this and you need to do that but uh honestly you're you're, you're with the with the rocaster and the mv7 for your audio sorted um then you're you're fine <laughs> so i would say just check on your lighting you know make sure you got some good light and by the way when i say good lighting uh that's another thing uh right here i've got you know a nan light with a 90 centimeter softbox i've got a nan light with a 60 centimeter softbox over 
over there. So these are like sort of professional grade video lights. But if I just go back to what I mentioned about the first load of videos, like the majority of videos on my channel, as well as being shot with a, a, a Canon EOS 60D that was, you know, 10 years old, 12 years old at this point, um, which is still actually hooked up as a uh, another camera angle. Hello, that's this one. So this is a this is a 12 year old camera uh, that's that you're looking at right now. Um, but for uh, for those earlier videos, um, I didn't have none lights. I literally had these, uh, whatever they were. I think it was $50 for two soft boxes and two, uh, you know, light stands, uh, cheap quality stuff. Um, but they got the, di uh, the diffuser in the front of the soft box, obviously. Um, but the actual light inside you had to provide yourself, which was just regular household light bulbs. So if I wanted uh, daylight, I used daylight bulbs. If I wanted something warmer, I would use the, the warm lights. Um, and then it got four little bayonet, that little um, screw fittings. So if you wanted more light, you just added in another bulb. So that is like the technical uh, uh, level of uh, of my my early videos in terms of the lighting it was just a case of just get something to increase the light but it did a really great job so uh, just coming back to the gear point yeah um, if you've got some good lighting and you've, you've already got the mv7 and the rocaster and the, uh, the the iphone you're going to uh, you're going to make some great uh, great stuff um let me come down hey aubrey fantastic to see you here as always hope you're doing uh, great i can't wait to meet you at uh, create camp in person it's going to be quite weird to see everybody like all of the well not everybody but a huge portion of the uh, the ecamp fam there it's going to be uh, great um hey dan uh, i don't know when you're leaving for amesbury but if i don't talk to you have a wonderful uh, <laughs> stressless flight i'm leaving on monday um uh, monday my time and it's basically uh, 36 hours and three flights to get there so um it won't be stressful i uh because <laughs> i'm i'm traveling alone if i go traveling with the kids uh even just for a day trip it seems that we've got you know uh, mountains of bags and everything even just to go out uh, to the shops seemingly uh whereas if i'm just traveling solo uh, um, then yeah, it's just a, a small little bag and I'm, I'm good to go. And I also, I'm quite blessed. I can sleep anywhere. So um, yeah, my uh, <laughs> my wife is constantly amazed and uh, dare I say it, a little bit annoyed that like, how is it that you're managing to sleep? And I'm like, I just thought I'd get a quick five minutes in, you know, wherever it happens to be, you know, next to a volcano or a, <laughs> a war zone, I can sleep anywhere. So yeah, traveling's uh, good for me. Um, Mel Taylor, great to see you here. Thanks for stopping by. I'm using a Rodecaster Pro 2 with StreamYard, uh, myself and guests and comments and YouTube clips. How do I avoid uh, phasing sound? How do I separate my, ma my mic and incoming guest audio, uh, YouTube audio? Um, that will be if you're using your Rocaster Pro 2 with StreamYard and so you are on your mic um, and then you are your guests presumably they are they are they live or are they joining um, they joining through StreamYard I'm, I'm guessing you mean through StreamYard um, how do I avoid the uh, phasing sound that could be um, by uh, uh, incoming guest audio now do you mean do you mean that they're in person um, I'm not sure now. If if you mean that they're coming in through the through Streamyard, the thing to do is make sure that mix minus is on, so that the mix the the Streamyard is coming in, um, and you're hearing it, um, but it's not being fed straight back again. So I, I don't know if that's what you're you're referring to actually. Um, the other thing that could cause it if you're if you're getting some sort of feedback is if um, if you if it's coming through speakers and then it's feeding back into the uh, the speakers and yeah you're saying from Streamyard so um, yeah actually if you've got Streamyard you, you know the uh, the um, the audio input and output from Streamyard uh, which may well be the same as your system audio if it's running in a browser uh, just make sure it's on the same channel whatever channel that is, Rocaster Pro 2 uh, or Rocaster, yeah, Rocaster Pro 2 main stereo, for example, uh, just make sure that both the speaker and the microphone setting in the browser are set to that. Um, and then just make sure that you do have that uh, that mix minus on. So let's just say it was on that main stereo channel. Uh, just make sure that the routing uh, for that channel uh, is set to mix minus. That's going to stop the audio coming in from the guest and going straight back out again. Um, that that should uh, that should resolve that issue. If, if, I, if I'm understanding uh, correctly, uh, the exact issue you're having that should uh, resolve that. I've got two comments up there somehow. Um, yeah, but uh, let me let me know if I've uh, if I've misunderstood that uh, that issue there. But uh, that should resolve it, I think. Um, can you uh, link the Discord? Uh, this may well have come in uh, after I uh, uh, posted it, but I'll just drop it in again. 
that is a link to uh, uh, to the Discord. Take one, and I've just got it covered up. <laughs> it's in the description and it's in the chat. Take one tech.io slash uh, family. Um, yeah, well, to be honest, Keely, I'm doing the same. I've only got uh, carry on with me as well. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I like to travel, uh, travel light. Um, <laughs> it's it's i've got i've got a picture somewhere of you know like us going on as a family and then uh, me just traveling you know wherever it is with a, a tiny little uh, little case so uh, yeah um well that is uh, that is all that i was going to cover if there are no other audio routing uh, questions for today though um then uh, do feel free to drop them in the comments if they come up if you're watching on the replay uh, and of course uh, do feel free to join the discord and check them out there and as i say if you do need any just one-to-one -one help sometimes people just not late need to uh uh <laughs> need, need, i've just noticed this uh, last comment come in i'll just pop that up hey richard great to see you here uh just waving saying hi from the back <laughs> uh yeah if you have got any uh, you know all your audio routing uh, uh issues that you need to get help with then you can always uh, book a call with us as well uh, with me as well <laughs> say us uh, the many the many voices in my head <laughs> you can book a call with them all <laughs> all right then thanks for tuning in and i'll leave a link on the replay when i get around to it in a few hours uh for those watching to go and check out some of my other um uh, videos all about roadcaster and once again thank you to all of my channel members uh, thank you so much for your support it really means it really means a lot Take care. See you next time.